night I view my home and take my flight. This robe of flesh I'll drop and rise to seize the everlasting price and shout while passing through the air. Farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. That was a good song. That last verse that uh, may I thy consolation share till from Mount Pisgah's lofty eyes. The Lord took Moses up on Mount Pisgah and said, you can view the promised land, but you can't go in, but we're going to be able to go in. Uh, viewing Mount Pisgah's lofty heights, I'll leave this flesh. Boy, what a day. That would be great, one. Won't have no more pain, no more worries. No more nothing but wondrous joy forever. Why do people not want that? I guess they don't have ears to hear it, huh? I just can't imagine not wanting, I can, to go be the Lord. Because I was young once. <laughs> Youth will keep you here. You get old, you say, I want to go over there. All right. Now, we read some emails this morning to you. Microphone. Oops, I better, better turn on my mic, had Help you, sir. I am stumbling on myself. All right. Won't help without batteries. All right, here we go. Had some uh, read some emails this morning. We're gonna read some more. These are people that write us from around the country, around the world. They watch us on TV and they see us on the internet because we stream 24 hours a day on the internet. And uh, let me see here. I got more emails than I can get to. I'll read the ones I can get to and the ones I can't. I won't. All right. Uh. All right. I'll read a little bit of one here and help a fellow to see some things. All right, these are people who write to us, and they love, evidently, hearing the Word. I'm looking for something before I get started. And uh, these are people that see us on the Internet. They see us uh, on... Uh, wait a minute. Let me find this before I start. Sits on the TV all over America. They're watching us right now on the camera while we live stream. And we want people to know these truths, and I rejoice in the truth every day. It don't sound like I'm rejoicing. I am. I'm rejoicing, but I'm sad because the world doesn't want it. What bothers me more than anything else is that the believers don't want it. That's what bothers me. The believers act like, well, I don't need that I got saved or, or something like that. I don't know what it is. They think they've got things together and they won't have nothing together. And uh, I'm looking for one piece of paper. How can I lose a piece of paper? Because I got 40 dozen pieces up here. That's why. And when I get to it, I won't find it. Mm. All right. Let's read some of these things. Uh, got a got some PayPal comments. These are people around the world that give to the ministry through PayPal, and you can do that if you want to. Francis Bishop in Australia. 
I would like to pronounce it Australia. That's where they pronounce it. I probably am not getting it right. Australia. Uh, sorry that I have not sent you any money for a while, but I've had a hard month. This is Francis Bishop. My family needed a handout, which I accepted as my place. I'm sending you my usual gift to be used as the Lord leads you. Please keep sending me Jim's DVDs as I re agree with him 100%, praying for all daily, the lonely Aussie Frank. Frank, we love you, brother. Come see us someday. Robin, Robin and Whale Peters in, I think they're in Amarillo, Texas. Uh, hello, Jim, Mary, and all grace and truth. Welcome home, Scott, Delilah, and children. Welcome home. Uh, Jim, I would like to say we gnosko these truths and we also ito these truths. All praise and glory to be to God. We do agape, agape, oh, you're, you all, wishing you all well, and may you all be in stenos hodos, the straight road way. From Robin and Whale, my son, and I'm sure that's Amarillo, Texas. Donna Cook in Nebraska, praise the Lord. That's good, isn't it? And then Joe Barnes in Texas. Howdy, Jim and church. Sorry I don't write so often, but wanted to let you know your teaching is blessing to me. You finally put the Word of God together for me. May God hold you up as you grow weary, but steadfast, piercing the beast with the sword of truth. As always, use my offering wherever the church needs it. Your friend, Joe Barnes. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate that. That very encouraging letter. And then got a YouTube comment. Speaks Fire commented. Just a correspondence comment. Thank you, Jim. So-called black Hebrew Israelite says salvation is only for them. <laughs> I thought a Jew was of the heart. I thought circumcision was of the heart. It don't have any... It has nothing to do with color. That's ridiculous. You mean... Now, I'm not quite white. Can I go to heaven? It's kind of pinkish tan. Could I go? <laughs> People are funny. When the Bible says the Jew is not outwardly but of the heart, circumcision is of the heart. What does that have to do with black and white? Good grief. It has nothing to do with that. Have an understanding now with your last respond to my Romans 9 question on how to respond to them. Thanks. They keep bringing up Jacob, have I loved, Esau have I hated, and they think Esau is the white man. <laughs> Esau was an Edomite. He was uh, a heathen. And they didn't have, didn't have anything to do with what color a man was. Yeah, I know a bunch of baloney. Well, it is. It's like saying, all this preaching I'm doing is wasted. I don't get to go to heaven. I have to go to hell one day. I'm just wasting my time. Thanks. <laughs> Dan Ide commented on the changing of the guard in Israel's government of judges from, from a government of judges. This is 1125. I don't even remember that. Uh short story about Catholic indoctrination. We were told by a nun teaching seven-year-olds in a catechism, do not chew the Eucharist. <laughs> I think that's funny. Were you ever told that? Weren't you a Catholic? Yeah. You're not, don't chew the Eucharist. You swallow it whole. Ah. Do not chew the Eucharist because some of Jesus' flesh can get stuck in your teeth. Now, that's funny. Well, if he can turn himself into a cracker, he ought to be able to, to digest himself out of your teeth. He ought, to be, he ought to be a spiritual toothbrush. If you brush your teeth and spit Jesus' flesh out, you will go to hell. <laughs> Catholics can be funny, can't they? <laughs> that's funny. 
put it on your tongue and swallow it as fast as you can so this doesn't happen. Sad part is we all believed her. No, what do you mean? No small wonder Catholics never speak a word about human digestion. <laughs> now that is, that's funny, Dan. Thank you for writing that to us. We need to laugh once in a while. B. Jones. Hey, B. How's your hubby? Huh? Big Glenn. Down in Houston, Texas. Listening to Jim these last few, these few weeks makes you realize that the pursuit to be young and happy is a big lie. It's a dream you have when you're young and it don't ever happen. You just you just work hard and raise kids and go, ah. And then you get old and you say, oh, there's the kids. Come and see me. You're always, I think, one of the best songs that's ever written is The Cats in the Cradle. Y'all remember that? <laughs> when, when are you coming home, Dad? I don't know when. And then it's a little boy begging his daddy. And then he grows up. The little boy grows up and the daddy gets old. He says, and the daddy, and the daddy says, when are you coming home, son? I like that. I don't know when, Dad. I got things to do. Uh, listening to Jim these few years makes you realize that the pursuit to be young and happy is a big lie, and it's a one-way ticket to misery. <laughs> Lord, this is eye-opening. <laughs> what it is, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, B. <laughs> it's uh, Brittany and Glenn down in Texas. Then I got a, a YouTube comment. On sons of God, Mary, the daughters of men, explained, angels do not sleep with women. This is from Jesus Saves. He should read the first book of Enoch. Yeah, I'm sure that's in the inspired word of God, right? First book of Enoch and the book of Jasher to better understand the truth about the Old Testament sons of God. Ma'am, you hadn't listened to much of what I've preached. To be a son of one, someone, you have to be doing the will of that father among the Jewish culture and fallen angels cannot be sons of God it's not possible besides that that is an old fairy tale and it's not a fairy tale it's a Jewish tale myth it's Jewish mythology out of Ginsburg's legends of the Jews and those giants were 11,300 feet tall now I don't know how they can cohabit with women uh, Gizzi Shadows commented on Predestination, you must be hated, reproached, infamous, separate from the world, bearing a cross, people saying all manner of evil against you. Uh, G.C. Shadows, I'm hated by the world, I and I relate to Psalms 31. My neighbors hate me. I have no friends. We're not talking about paranoia. We're talking about you got to be hated for what you're saying. Christmas is pagan. Easter's pagan. God doesn't love everybody. Even my peers stay away from me, and my family is exactly how Matthew 10, 21 reads. And even my partner doesn't write or call me, though he's a believer. Your partner, he's not your husband. Is he living with you? Always when they say partner, that means I'm living with him. I guess she means that. First of all, you don't have any business living that way people are not going to be accepting you as a believer if you do. Because God wants me alone for a while. Now, I mean alone. That means she was with a guy and he's gone. I have people call me and say, my girlfriend won't, won't listen to me while I tell her these truths. And immediately I know that they're living with her. I say, you living with her? Yeah. I said, what do you expect? And I correct him immediately. I said, you're going to have to marry her if you ever expect her to believe you. You can't, you can't preach to her and you're living with her out of wedlock. I was bitter over this and thought God is against me for a while. But now I am awake to truth and how this is his way of separating me for my benefit to draw nearer and stop distractions. Everything works for the benefit of his sheep. Amen. Maybe you're pulling away and that's good. Fred Flintstone commented, okay, you, 
Have you seen Barney lately? Uh, God the Holy Spirit is our verification, not the praise of man. Okay. And then Ann Shirley. Ann Shirley writes. She writes often, Predestination is a very hard truth to believe, but it has to be true. It brings true humility when you embrace it. Thank you. That's exactly right. Having taken a few basic Spanish courses, I was looking for a place to practice and learn more, so I tried to connect with a Hispanic ministry in my neighborhood. After two or three services, I realized that their doctrine had major flaws, even though a lot of the people were kind and friendly. Well, you find kind and friendly people down here at the Methodist Church, but they're all messed up. Uh, Ted Joe Palato Joe. I read his letter. He's from overseas somewhere. And he says, thanks a lot, Pastor. God bless you. You're welcome. If you can ever come see us, come see us. Clinton Baltazar. He's been with us for 10, 12 years. And he loves the truth. Pastor Jim, I feel like you are preaching this message to me. Well, well I am, Clinton. Of course, I'm preaching it to me too. Sometimes I monitor all my... TV broadcast that I can, a telecast, and sometimes I'm preaching and I'm getting real convicted and just break up in tears. It affects me. I don't know why it can't affect others. I'm not afraid to stand for truth. I don't care who you are or what the situation might be. However, my, I may be too abrasive when calling out what I think are false teachers. Well... Be bold, that's the thing. And if they're preaching something wrong, tell on them. Pastor, it drives me bonkers when people call you a liar or comment just to argue. You mean calling me a liar? It's, I'm used to it. My skin is getting as tough as, as old hard leather rawhide seat on the saddle on a horse out west. I apologize if I have been mistreated, misrepresented grace and truth ministries by being too hard on people. Main thing to do is tell them the truth, firm, but not mean, not abrasive. I don't have it all together. Well, gosh, nobody does. I was real hard on people when I was 48 and 50. I didn't cut them any slack. I had to learn, give them the truth. If they don't want it, leave them alone. And there's a way to give people truth. I was talking to, I told this Wednesday, I believe, I was talking to a guy down here at Rivergate that worked on a, one of my cars, and uh, I said, I, you know I've got a ministry. He said, yeah. I said, well, I teach things other preachers don't preach. Boy, he said the magic words to me. He said, like what? Somebody says, like what? I'm going to tell them, well, God doesn't love everybody for one thing. And they start getting, ooh, peculiar looking. But I can see my faith growing. May God beat me into submission. He will. And turn the heat up. I need the fire. Boy, that's what we all need to say. May the Lord break us and make us believe him, Period. God's will is being done, agape family. Boy, that's a little short message in itself, isn't it? And then Joe Baleo, uh, a comment on signs of the end times, Grace and Truth Ministries. Joe Baleo says, I love that shirt. I have the perfect black shorts for it. Where do you get those shirts? Well, where you get them, you go down to your local shopping center and you buy, buy a good shirt, one that won't shrink up, and get white. That's the best kind to have. And maybe get black on white to have the... And I a lot of times have it printed out. And then go to the uh, local... There in most shopping centers, they'll have a have a, what do you call it, uh, 
the, those shirt pins they write on them. Oh, well, anyway, you can get you, they've always got a at malls they've got a person that will write on shirts for you. All right. Well, I'm gonna read this bill because it's encouraging to me. Uh, you don't need to read this in the church. Well, I like it, uh, like what you say. There are so many others that need their letters read, help them to be a part of grace and truth. There are many that feel that they are alone. They're the ones that you need to talk directly to and mention their names. As for me, I know I'm not alone because I can see. Just last night, my wife and I were talking about how faith has grown over the last three years. Tell Jim the seeds that he planted are growing. It's very encouraging to me. I know Jim says he's very tired of this world and his health is not good at times. I am going to be selfish here and say I look forward to 10 or 12 more years of his teaching to mature myself in the Word. Thank you very much, Bill. Thanks to all who helped record, produce, and get the true gospel of Christ out to the elect of our Lord. I still watch one or two sermons a day, five or sometimes six days a week. I can repeat Jim's sermons in Greek words in my sleep. That's what I want people to do. Sometimes in my dreams, I share the gospel to strangers. I always find these dreams interesting. If I don't get to meet any of you here on earth, I look forward when we get home. Thank you, Bill McKernan. We need that. We need the encouragement. I, I got more. Oh, he don't want me to read that to the ministry. Uh, this is a few message. Oh, I'll have to read these later. All right. All right, I'll move this over here. Move these here. These letters really are encouraging to me. I don't know about you. I get I I get very depressed over a world. We're reaching enough people on TV and the internet. I thought if we ever reached this you realize we're reaching up to several million people or there's millions of people that have access to us. Just on TV, there's millions of people just in 200 towns and cities. And we don't get that much calls. We get a lot of calls and letters, but not for the amount of people that have access to us. And uh, we're getting enough to keep the bills paid, to pay the lights, and pay our $1,200 a month, $12,000 a month TV bill. We got a five people in our payroll, uh, me and Mary and Mike and Tom and Dave, and uh, and we're working all the time on the ministry. So we're just gonna keep working, okay? Is that all right? Y'all want me to quit? <laughs> okay, I I'll keep on. I love teaching. I love, I love opening up the book and showing you all of these wonderful puzzles that go. Whoosh. I love that. I would make a real good high school teacher because I love doing it. I like to see people learn. I love it when. People come up to me after church and say, I didn't know this. You know, that was really interesting that you said so-and-so. And that's like just pouring water on a flyer when you're doing that to me. Really encourages me. You know, I've had people here for six or seven years that never made one comment about anything I ever said. I don't even get it. They didn't even act like they cared. All right. Remember our announcements. We're on TV a lot, about 18 hours a week in Nashville, and 
that's on channel 49 comcast every night at 8 30 every sunday morning 8 30 every saturday morning at nine o'clock same channel and uh, then we're on in hendersonville if you live in town here every tuesday evening at five and thursday night at seven if you watch these dvds i don't know if people realize it takes a long time to realize everything I'm teaching is like this. Every message I preach, I can't get away from this morning's message with tonight's message. It's just, I can teach and it'll all come around. It'll come clicking together. And that's why I like to teach it, because I can see it. When you start seeing it, I have people come up and they'll say, Jim, I'm just beginning to see this picture. I say, wonderful. I want you to see it. If you pay attention to all of my teaching, it's like going off to college and learning some uh, electrical engineering course and being the straight-A student in there. It's just magnificent. Don't forget, we support our needy people. We got a lot of needy, and every first of the month I go to the bank, and I get, and I get uh, cashier's checks and mail them out to about twelve to fifteen people. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's less, and I give some money every week to certain people, and this is to help them because they're struggling. So if you want to help them, send your send your check and make it out to Grace and Truth Ministries and put needy on the bottom of it. And you can send as well gift cards. You pick them up in any store. And that helps some of the needy people buy groceries and so forth. Uh, and we are still, we're about to get underway with Scott and Delilah's ministry here. That's our missionaries. They just came back from Ecuador this past week, and I'm anxious for them to get going. We're going to, we don't be praying for them because we don't know exactly how we're going to work this. Scott can do the same things here in America he was doing in Ecuador. Ecuador got dangerous. It got more than they could handle. There was a lot of threat there. It was kind of an open threat because uh, the dictator there does not like Americans and they don't like people from up here and they it's kind of dangerous in a lot of areas and the Chinese may move in there they're coming in there and stripping the land and wanting to get the oil out of Ecuador and they don't Scott says they don't have any way to pay it back other than letting the Chinese come in and do what they want to do. And that will ruin the rainforest in Ecuador. And the Chinese may say, we will take your land in lieu of the money you owe us. We've loaned you so many hundreds of billions of dollars to uh, do these improvements in your nation, and we want you instead. So anything can happen. They got back up here. And we're going to continue their ministry, their Spanish-speaking ministry, from here. They're going to be meeting one night a week. We're going to try to get them on public access TV. We want to get them on, on to start with that. And uh, depending on the offerings, how they come in for them, uh, it'll be up to them how much they can spend on lease access TV. Once you get on... Public access, lease access costs, I'm on some lease access stations that cost $50 an hour. And I'm on some that are, uh, some of them are, believe it or not, $2 an hour. <laughs> That's funny. And uh, that would be like down in Louisiana, <coughs> some little towns down there. All right. Uh, so support them, send your check, make it to Grace and Truth uh, for the mission that goes into their account at the bank. 
There's no need in you sitting down and writing out to different ministries. Send it all here. We put it in the bank. Scott's got an ATM card. So, and by the way, you and I need to go and talk to our accountant and see, kind of see where we are with this switch that needs to be done. I don't know how to handle it. And I know you don't. Uh, all right. And don't forget our picnic will be June the 17th all day long down here at Rockland Recreation Center. And our chili cookout will be in October. Uh, October the 14th all day long down here on Rockland Road. All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, Scott, you want to pray for us? Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for bringing us together here to hear your word. We pray, Lord, that you give best a general message that will be edifying to us. Help us, Lord, to die to self each day. Cause Christ to resurrect in us. Help us to honor and glorify you in all that we do. In Jesus' name. Ninety seconds. Right.